We do say unto the whole house of Israel greetings in the blessed name of great assurance, the name of Yorkshire, Hamashiach, and may the profound riches of Yah's great blessings rest upon his nation. That which is precious unto his heart, he has elected by his power to foreordain a people that they are special unto him that he uses the term sugula a great beautiful treasure that's beyond expressive superlatives to give us understanding of what precious treasure his nation is to him so we greet you all our friends as well as our enemies we're certainly not afraid of our enemies. I'm not concerned with the opinion of anyone, those that dislike, defer some other way, and to others that can appease their intellectualism and soften things whereby it is more palatable unto them. I am not even concerned with them. You will go to hell in your ways. I'm concerned with those that show great love and kindness, yeah. regard for me. I will not alter the course of Yah to appease one, but I certainly do consider the whole house of Yisrael. Again, greetings, and you that have the power to pray. Let us remember our precious Ak Yaakov there in Florida, he and his shore. To pray for him, his strength, and for Yah's great power to manifest in a way that's beyond the ability for the mind to understand. As well as our Ach Mikayah there in Cincinnati, faithful Ach, let us remember them in our prayer that Yah's great healing power shall rust upon them and not only on them but us all that he began the process in our minds that's where the healing began in our minds we must get our minds set in order and the body will follow pursuits it begins in the heart in the liba so we must begin to operate on that you cannot operate on anything or have any procedure of operation without instruments that are sharp, scaffolds. You must have the scaffolds to cut, and to make the incisions. And so we must have a word that is sharp, sharper than any two-edged sword. No bacteria of death when it cuts that will leave some kind of infection, it rids it out. And so as a nation, that is what we need as a people. And sometimes we may think that he is somewhat hard when he says that our men, the ish, he must develop not only his mind and his strength, but he must develop his physicality. That he is able to speak. I'm not talking about some Olympiad proudness. Because you can run fast. Or because you can walk fast. That is not what I'm talking about. We must be built up in the most Kadosh Emun. The faith of Yah. That we are steadfast. We are firm. We're consistent. That is the physicality of an ish. Yeah. Not because you think you have some kind of, of physical proudness that you're strong. That's not the strength. That's not the physicality of a man. And don't think that because you have some sense of what you believe is proper for the body. That that exudes you and exalts you because it doesn't. 
we must labor work while it is yet day in what? In the knowledge of Torah to understand that we may expense it. And our physicality will present the strength of our minds. And so when men see us and others do, they will see a strength that is beyond the recognition of a carnal mind. Then they will ask questions. What matter of man is this? He doesn't talk like others. He doesn't walk like others. His facial expression is not like others. I'm going to teach today. I received an email today that one says to me, break it down. So in order to break it down, one must have the skill set of a teacher, in essence, a pundit. And a pundit is one that has an accumulated knowledge and wisdom of matters that they can speak with preciseness of judgments because of the experience and knowledge that one possess, and they speak it with the fiber engraved into everything they say with great authority. And so I speak from the mind of Yorkshire, Hamashiach today. And I speak to you as a pundit of the royal courts of Yah to honor to defend and with great regard his order, his mitzvah, his Torah of life. And so I speak as a pundit of his Torah with authority, words that are authoritative, words that will judge, words that will examine, and words that shall reveal the very mind of Yahshua HaMashiach. And so my friend, I shall break it down. Each word and each letter and each concept and the knowledge of Yah's Torah. That even the one that is walking in the way without the excellence of his knowledge may understand we need the power of his being, his being all. We need to understand. We must be able to discern and to know what is of Yah and what is not of Yah. We cannot continue to allow this pompous attitude that serenades in our own minds and tells us that we are knowledgeable of Torah. We have no ability to discern our own activities of our own mind that are inappropriate yes. and that it is vile and false before Yah. Yeah. So we need men of that capability. Yeah. We need men of that capability. We need men of that capability. Yeah. Students, yeah. one must become a student in order to become a pundit. One must become a student first. And the process of life, one will continue to be a student if one is to be a pundit. If one is to be a pundit. Yah has given us this Torah. He has written out the strip. So we teach from that strip and nothing else. I want to continue in the teaching Bobel, Babylon, Babel. The great mystery of this woman and the seven Haracha, the mountains of Bobel, that has been misconstrued in the false teachings of today because these men are reiterating and egurgitating the same false fallacies of Benny Hinn. T.D. Jakes, and all of the so-called powers of Christendom. It can't be that way. If men like them espouse that, 
That cannot be the resolution if men like uh, Bishop Eddie Long uh, espouse that. And he teach from the same precept that these that say they are Yisrael, they are the sons of Ibrahim, those that are from beyond, if they are speaking the same things that these men are speaking, I don't speak like them. I don't listen to them. And this wisdom did not come from uh, the lectures of men out of books. It comes by the Ruach and listening to simple men that do not boast in some kind of brevity uh, of their knowledge of Torah, but just simply speak it or read it. That's how it comes. That's where the plethora of wealth lies. Not in one that we think possess it, but in the one that expresses it with its most simplistic form. And their lives are representatives of that. And they walk in the order of that. And this is a generation that understands not Bobel. They don't understand the rivers of Jinnah. They don't understand the summits of her strength. The zenith of her power. And so what they do, they troll and search to hear someone that has the same familiar spirit as they have. I don't want to have a familiar spirit with a Christian. I don't want to have a familiar spirit with a Jesus thumper. That that's just the truth. They will search out fine men like that, listen to them, uh, and then they regurgitate uh, what they say. And they are inspired by what they say. I will speak from the book. And I will break it down. I shall, my friend, I will break it down. Each word. I want to be gone here in Bereshit, in Giliana. In the book, the writings of your Kohanan Revelation. I want to be gone here in Giliana. Revelation chapter 17 and verse 9. I'm going to take my time. I'm going to explain the nuances, the wisdom of words. You cannot understand the totality of anything if you are rejecting the preciseness and the value of each word. That's why we must go beyond our ability to interpret by our own visual and spiritual concept of what the word defines. We must go beyond that, Yisraya. We must search the reputable sources as to define the origin and what Yah says concerning the words. You're not going to find that with one or two chizve scripture. It takes a preponderance. It takes scriptures from Bereshit to Gilyana. This is the wisdom of Yachohan as he saw this great power rise up. With superb dominancy and power to bewitch, to alter the mind, to change the concepts, ideas, ideology, and to spew out that which is so vile and abominable uh, that the only way we can understand the depths of that nida, the uncleanliness uh, of this vile. Uh, Turning this monster of death is that there must be men that labor to understand. Even when their bodies are weary, they must labor. It's amazing that students do that all the time in college. And they labor and they excel to become cum laude. Where are the Kumnadis among Yah's people? Wise men, beautiful daughters of Tizayon. Where are they? Yokohan speaks here in Revelation chapter 17, verse 9. He expressed unto us here this mind, this laba that is presented unto you. As Shaul says, let the same mind 
Now he was on the hour for the revelation of Yahshua HaMashiach. There is no way that the revelation of the wisdom of Yah can be revealed unto us unless we have the revelation of Yahshua HaMashiach. We must have that. And without that revelation, we cannot see clearly. And the interpretation of Torah, we do not understand that. And so we will be guided by misconceptions and thoughts and concepts that have been ordained by men whose mind is not the mind of Yahshua HaMashiach. He was the Torah. He is the words. He delighted to please Yah. And any time our minds are moved away from delighting to please Yah, you know it is the mind of the beast. It is Nahash. When you exalt yourself in the planes of your God thinking, uh, it is Nahash. I will become like you, Yah. I know what is right and wrong. You can't tell me we'll battle against the power of Nahash to say that. In the midst of your confusion, you are like the Most High. You have all the essence He has. So He said, Here is the mind, the Laba, which has Hukhna, which has the wisdom, the understanding, the nurturing of the knowledge of Yah, that this mind. When it speaks, it calls the light of men's eyes to be enlightened. When they speak, men become baffled and confound by their speech. No more spoke like that man. For his voice resonated down to the core of the heart of man. And revealed all the hidden darkness. For he is light and the Torah is light. It is the guidance of God's people in a time... Well, the darkness is so thick that our minds don't even ponder Yah in our daily activities. He said, I want to show you the hukmah, the wisdom. You have experienced the knowledge of Torah by your willingness and your passion, your desire to understand the intricate operations of Torah by the ruach. So you take all of that collectively in this great, powerful image that you may understand how all of those things reveal this unto you. You must have that. He says, I want you to understand that the seven rush, the seven heads, the seven heads, the judgment is complete. The order of that rush, it is sound and established by who? By Yah. He is the one that establishes it. He says, I want you to understand that there are seven mountains. These are the seven khara, seven mountains, on which the woman, he makes a profound statement here, that he says that the woman, Yashab, she sits, she dwells, she sustains herself, she sits, and she sits down for one thing. Yashab implies that when one has the power to sit, Yashab, they sit for one thing, that is to pronounce judgment she sits at the rush she sits at the head she sits at the summit of the mind that's why Yakahan said here is is the mind of wisdom we must deal with the aspect with the mind of wisdom so she sits I give us a parallel and an example we allow something to sit in us not one day two not three years, not ten, but has been sitting in the, fort, in the vortex of our minds for 25 years. Here's where the woman sits. And the spirits that sit 
in her bosom. They sit or they are sharp to make judgment. You must understand that Bobel was built in Jena, the two mighty rivers that ran out of her. We can study the very nature of history and what the world calls every great civilization. It began on the banks of rivers, the interstate, the traversing, the gateway to the sea. It all begins there. And so through the rivers of that sin activity of abominations, they have flown from the rivers of this Shana. And the Torah expressed the word sea as people, as, sea, as the sea, metaphorically and figurative. And so what we call her knowledge has flown from the rivers of great strength that has emboldened a generation. And the strength of those two rivers and the summit of her rush, we must understand. You can't look at these words and think you understand where the woman sits. That's where she remains, her habitation. But when one sits, one sits, your shab, it is to make judgment. On this past week, as I had time and to relieve myself from a little work, I've worked hard physically. I find myself searching Torah. I use some of the most authoritative research of mankind, what we call dictionaries, and to process the definitive of words, to understand the depths of their origin, and I relate it all back to the Torah and see if that has significance. He says, where the woman sits or yashab makes judgment, she sits or her seven heads or the seven hills or the seven mountains where the woman sat. So as I began to investigate as a pundit, the word mountain, its origin, how it has coursed through its definitive through different cultures. And I go back to the better sheets of the language of his people. Now we're going to define the word ha or hara, ha or hara, mountain. I want to show you what it means now. You see, there are those that say that it sits on seven physical mountains. Well, then what about all of these cities that are built on seven physical mountains? You cannot deny them. What about all the cities that are built upon the seven mountains? And that are claimed that they are built on the seven mountains. It is beyond that concept. And I will prove it. Now let me through the process of our forefathers. The language. The word mountain or hara. What does it imply? This is not my concept or my definition. It means this. It means a vast number or quantity. Quote, he was a mountain of a man. It doesn't speak of one's physicality. It speaks of the wealth of one's knowledge and one's sensibility to the thing that one is expressing. You heard that expression. He was a mountain of a man. His persona was greater than his physical stature. He was a diminutive man. Yet he was a mountain of a man. Has nothing to do with some tall seven foot three. But it is his ability as an orator or as a speaker to present ideas, concepts, and thoughts that mesmerize the minds of the hearers. That's what it means now. It means an enormous mass of bulk. A major obstacle or a difficulty. That was a mountain of a task that I had. See, we want to relegate it to a physical type of formation. It's greater than that. 
And so you hear Benny Hinn talking about the Catholic whole house. You hear all of these that call themselves Hebrews. That's all they know. They have been trained by a filthy whore. They have not been trained by the mind of Yahshua. I shall break it down, my friend. In the archaic, that's one of the first things that Evangelist Hartsfield taught me. He said, son, when you define words, always look at that reading in dictionaries that say archaic. Archaic. That it, it represents the essential of the formation of the word through the linguist's mind, what it implies and what it means. We must understand. These words have come from the heart of Yah. These words, hara, did not come from the English vernacular. Ha did not come from the Russian vernacular. He began in the speech of Yah's mind. That this is what the archaic, the antiquated meaning of this word means. It means this now, huge. Huge. It means colossal. Beyond the ability to realize the scope of it. It means monstrous. It means this now. We've taught on this in Nahash. Behemoth. A behemoth. Huge. And beyond the ability to comprehend. And also Leviathan. These are two words that are pronounced constantly in Torah. Bohemoth and Leviathan, Levathan. To understand the depths of that, we must understand what Bohemoth means. It means this, hear me, something of oppressive and monstrous size. There's something that is beyond your ability to Obtain or ascertain to subdue, to bring subjected unto your authority. So it is something that is monstrous. That is what it means. That is what something that is that huge and that monstrous. It means that. It is, he was a behemoth of a man. He was larger than life. I had a behemoth problem that my mind could not adjust. It drove me into despair. This is what it means. So in order for me to get the depths of this, then I go to Torah to understand what Torah says about behemoth. Or what it says about Leviathan or Leviathan. In Torah... Leviathan, it is a symbolic sign and attribute of one specific thing with other amenities. It is that which is evil, seductively wicked. And it has the power, it is larger than the masses of most things or anything of its kind. That is what Leviathan implies. Leave your thought. When I found that, when I researched this word, it says the largest of most massive things. So when there is something that is massive, then leave your thought is larger than that. Behemoth, it is of a massive construct that you're not going to dismantle this lie of the Roman whore being. Where the seven mountains are, you're not going to dismantle that construct. That's why we must have the mind to understand this woman. To understand this so we can process it by the mind of Yahshua HaMashiach. We must define things by what Torah says. And with that... I want to open your understanding to a simple thing from the tribe of Yeremiah, Baruch, second Baruch. In this time that we are in, he saw this great power ascending and rising 
to a state that it was beyond power to contain. It was a behemoth. It was a monstrous size. It was massive beyond the ability for one to even correct or even uh, siege upon it and one take control. We're dealing with something here. He did not say this is your wisdom. He said this is the mind of wisdom. This is the mind of wisdom. We must have a laba of wisdom. This is the mind that has the hukma. He says in Baruch, second Baruch 29.2, Yah says for at that time, I shall only protect those found in this land. He's talking about the land of Yisra'ya. Is he talking about the physicality? He's talking about those uh, that are found uh, in the promises of Abraham. Because Yisra'ya means uh, that we as a nation, the power of Yah prevails in us. Yisra'ya shall protect only those that are found uh, in the land. Where there is true Shaha, where it emanates from our bosom, the delight, a bound before our Abba to please him in all that we do, Yisraya. He says that are found in the land at that time. He's talking about this Akharith, uh, the latter time, at the time of, of great agony, something that is so huge. That it oppresses the mind. Something that is so vast uh, that its tentacles reach beyond nations. Uh, that even the kings of the nations uh, are drunken by it. He says, uh, and it will happen uh, that when all that which shall come to pass uh, in these parts uh, have been accomplished. When all that Yah has ordained. When all that Yah has set in motion for it to be done. We're not going to stop anything that Yah has ordained. He has ordered our steps in the power of His promises, His Dabarim. We heard the teaching on the order of Yah. So He has ordered our steps in His Torah, in the wisdom of light in Yahshua. And then He speaks of the Anointed One. The one that has risen out of the bosom of Yah. He said, and the anointed one shall be gone to be revealed. The power of Yahshua is not truly revealed unto us. That's why we can walk in sin and our conscience do not bother us. That's why we can do things that are contradictory and diametrically opposed to Yah. Because the true one... Has not been revealed. And the one that is anointed for Yah's great purpose. Has not been revealed. And that's why Shaul said to Timothy. Oh, he that holds back. Or he that hindereth. Or he that supersedes or stop this thing from being revealed. Uh, he said he must. The Ach Melach of Yisrael. Mikaya. He must be taken out of the way until uh, he's revealed. Because he stands as the protector of Yisrael. He says, and, and this massive behemoth, or this, this great beast, the spirit of Nahash, I want you all to hear me today and stop your minds from wandering here and there. This behemoth will reveal itself from its place. He says, and then Leviathan will come from the masses of the people, come from the sea. So you tell me that if this kingdom sits on seven hills, then the man that rises up out of it comes as a mermaid or some kind of freak. And the spirit of Nahash shall rise up out of the masses of the people. It shall rise up out of the hearts of the people because of the disdain for Yah. He says, and then he says, two great monsters, two great monsters, which I have created on the fifth day of creation, which I have kept until that time. There are things that are not revealed unto us. 
He said, I've kept until the fifth day. And the men that were in the fifth day, they have not come to the conclusion to understand. Because they're easily brought out. They love the gifts of the people. And the people send them gifts and massive quantities of money. And those men of the fifth day never understood nor received the knowledge of that. And so they received the knowledge of these uh, perverts. Oh, it's the Catholic whole house. The Catholic whole house has nothing to do with young. Nothing. And if you look to that for some kind of sign, you are a damn fool. You're sure, sir, that this is a damn of a wicked and an adulterous generation. They're always looking for a sign. And there should be no sign given. And so if you take the Pope as your sign, you are a damn fool. You are wicked. You don't know Yah. There will be no sign given but the sign of this great rising of your shore from our bellies when the rivers of water flows uh, and this great sign of great, uh, great rejoicing in the power of this wisdom. Uh, he must rise up from newer parts of Yisra'ya, from the nation, the only land that Yah has chosen. He must rise up out of that. And so the men of the fifth day never understood but there was a man, Hanak, uh, Baruch, could write about this fifth day. In the time of Jeremiah and the prophets, he says, uh, and not only that, I have kept him to that time, he said, and they will be nourish, nourishment for all who are left. Now tell me the spirit that is nourishing the people today. There are two summits of this. You tell me all mountains are the same height. They got different peaks, don't they? And the summit is the zenith of any mountain, isn't it? And so this Babel, she has uh, two major summits. That out of those summits, out of the two rivers, uh, flow every kind of unclean thing there is. Uh, that's why Yah commands us to come out of her, my people. Come out, not, not some governmental system. Show me one system of the world that is right. In that little damn strip of land you call Israel, faggots running, dogs and crooks and thieves and murderers, oppressors run it. You want to give that a sign of approval? The thieves and mass murderers and liars and, and dogs running. To. Are you glory in that? Let's go to the Holy Land. Damn your Holy Land. I'm going to the land. Do you understand? Yeah. The lawyers, and they think that they are right. You are corrupt as a wicked nidder woman. You prostitute. That's all there, they're prostitutes. And they're prostituting the minds of the people. And this is a damn dumb generation. They don't love men like me. Many don't love me, but that doesn't affect me one bit at all. We must understand our Abba. He is not playing. And our folly doesn't make us realize that he is the one that raises up. The powers that be. He turns the heart as he turns the rivers of. So he turns the heart of the king. For his purpose. I'm not going to. Be mad at Mr. Barack. Or no more than I was with Mr. Reagan or Mr. Clinton. No I'm not. I pray for him. Yeah, I just want to live in Shalom. Your nation. Quiet. That's all I want. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh God, my research reveals unto me mountain Hara. It comes from a root word, a ha, H A R, ha, ha. It comes from the root words Hara. And the root word of this Hara, it has one significant attribute it is the word loom l-o-o-m now you that have worked in manufactories as far as uh, quote cut mills unquote they had looms for one thing to weave and to spin 
and to create the garment. So in my research, as I search the annals of those that have become scholars of word definitive, I don't reject that. We're able to amass a knowledge of the wisdom of Yah as to define the words in their proper protocol. So the words, or where the word ha or ha comes from, hara, hara, it has the root meaning of the word loom. And the word loom, if we define it by the outstanding chronicles of definition, Merriam Webster, it is the power or the art of occupation of weaving. So in order to understand this, we must understand what the Torah says about loom and weaving. We must understand what it says. That's how we get understanding. You can't talk from some peripheral point of view. You must talk from the inside with great strength and tenacity. And you know what you're talking about. You can't just repeat what you've heard. I'm not repeating what I've heard because I've never heard this. I'm speaking how the Ruach opened up my mind to labor to get understanding. <clears throat> so it means uh, loom up. It means a mountain or a hill. That is what Hara means. He was a mountainous man. He was a mountain of a man. That's what Hara means. <clears throat> Now when I began to understand the word loom, hear this meaning now. The woman here is wisdom. Here is the mind of wisdom. The seven heads are the seven mountains that the woman sits on. And the word hara is uh, that it is uh, the word ha, its roots are based in the word hara. And I just define what it means. It is to loom up and to understand what loom means, not my definition. There are few things that I pay for, but I do spend $2.99 a month for a dictionary of synonym, anonyms, definitives. It's one of the most thorough research dictionaries that one can utilize. I do pay that. I do pay that. Because I'm not smart like you, that think you know everything. I'm always looking up words. You don't understand the flow of the sentence or the wisdom of the sentence unless you can define the words. Now the word loom, I want to define that. It means to brew, to come on, this is loom now, to dominate, to emerge. It means to overshadow. Now, who would have thought loom would express those characteristics? It means to soar, to stand out. That's why when Yakahan saw that thing, that behemoth, that muscle, that tanith, he was, he, he was mystified. It means to threaten. It means to impress, to rise up. It means to be menace, tower, to stand out, and above all that, it means figure. As one would say, that's just a figure of speech. But yet it has greater indication than what the speak denounces or pronounces. And so in order to understand the, the definitive of this woman, how she looms, we must search the book and see what it says even concerning uh, that one word. You can't integrate something that is not of that relevance to this word uh, and try to make it work. Too many do that. They made things work for their own superficial false concept. They're not doctrines. So I must examine the book. So you can't examine a book and figure about playing some silly video game. You must, as I labor, I come back and forward to study, to work. And believe me, when I say I work, I can work as hard as any man. Now, that's just a fact. 
I don't let physicality and physical obstacles stop me. I don't allow that. That's just a fact. Nothing. Let us see what scripture says here in Yeshua. In Isaiah, I want to begin there. I want you to understand how the word loom and its assessment in Torah. And here I want to speak as the prophet speaks of the wickedness and the vile activities of the nation. He wanted them to know what has separated us from Yah. Do you realize why your mind is separated from Yah? When Nimrud began to build the tower of Bobella, his mind was separated from Yah. There was something in the midst to cause the man. To, he was a great king that Yah has raised up. He was not raised up by Hashatan. He was raised up by the Most High. Just like the anointed one, Leviathan, or Leviathan, and the behemoth. Yah has raised up the government, the powers that be. Because it's either that the power of the government of Yisrael is going to stand and prevail, or it's not. And that's a fact. That's a fact. No doubt about that. So the prophet speaks to us in Yeshua chapter 59, verse 4. He tells us what has separated us from Yah. What has caused us and our minds to be removed. First of all, uh, none calls for justice or shadik. None calls for that. None kara, their voices uh, swell to the heights and the veins uh, of their neck. The arre puffs out. None calls for shadik, the just, justice of Yah. He said, nor is there anyone that pleads and seek Yah for imat or for his truth, for his imunah. No one seeks Yah how to be steadfast, unmovable and abounding in the Torah of Yah. That is what his uh, imunah is. That is what his emun is. You think it's just something we got to believe him for a damnable wicked car or a, a husband or a wife. It is when one Stay still and stand in the promises of Yah. What is that move about one doesn't shake? And this little bit of childlike stuff we got we call faith, it is easily shaken. It is not firm. It is not steadfast. It is shallow and weak as ducks you run. Nobody wants to deal with that. He says this now. No any plead. For the Emun, for the Emunna, where are the men of faith? Where are the daughters uh, that know how to pray? Where are they? Where are the scholars of Torah? Where are the pundits? Where is the pundit that speaks with authority? His judgment is precise because it's according to the mind of Yah. He says they trust in to hold. They love to be confused. They trust in vanity. They trust in things that are unreal. They trust in things that are empty. That's where we get our greatest joy from, empty things. I don't. I don't. We get our excitement from things that are not even momentarily. The breath I just breathe is over with. But it's the same breath that I breathe. It is the ruach of Yah that calls. It's the same breath. Same ruach. Yah is ruach and everything around us is living. So it's the same breath. Never change. Same today, yesterday, and forevermore. Proceeding on. He said, we are a nation that, uh, he said, we trust in vanity. Because we trust in vanity, we speak shah. We speak empty things. We speak lies. We speak shaka. We love lies. And we speak lies. We love falsehood and vanity and things that are not of any reality at all. And he said, we have conceived. I want you to get that. We have birthed in our hearts mischief or amal. The toil of our sin that we labor in. This is this great Leviathan. And this behemoth in our minds that we toil and labor to do wrong but not to do right. The seven hills 
are the seven heads, which are the seven hills, which are the rush, the summit, the place, the zenith of man. He says that we conceive mischief and we bring forth our birth is one of ovin, of iniquity. We bring forth iniquity. Ovin, ovon. It is a displeasure in Torah. That is what ovin is. When one does not oblige Yah in the order of Torah. He says, this is what we do. He used the word Bacha. He said they hatch. Now, I want you to understand this. That we actually hatch out cockatrice eggs. One of the most vile, most vile, poisonous serpent there is. And there is nothing that we hatch out of our minds like Nechash. The serpentine spirit, it is poisonous. There is nothing that we hatch out of our minds like nachash. That poison our attitude toward Yah. That is the purpose uh, of the confusion of Bobel. When we find envy and strife in the midst, there's confusion. Uh, and every kind of damnable evil work. No, you blame that one. It's you, my friend. Uh, that's why your mind thinks evil. I'm going to deal with her two summits. And that's what we are hatching out. Cockatrice eggs. Who wants to hatch out the egg of the serpent? How was it implanted in us? Through our vanity. Through our lies. Through the lies that have been taught by Bob Bell, I'm going to show you something about this dirty whore. She's a dirty slut. Christianity is a dirty slut. Wash yourself from her. Abandon everything you've learned from her. Because you're going to try to integrate that with the things of Yah. And that's all these damn fools do today. I call them fools. And fool, when he hears the truth, he says no. I don't have no problem with that. I don't care if you don't like me. I don't like me at times. So what? But I do love me. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. I love me a lot. He said, we are the people that bocha cockatrice eggs. And this is what we do. We arag. We loom. That is what arag. You got to search to find these things. He says, and we weave. Is that what a loom does? It weaves, doesn't it? It weaves the threads, the tiny threads. Uh, and, uh, and the more tiny threads you have, the more expensive uh, uh, the material is. If you can weave 200 or 300 threads an inch, ah, it becomes more expensive. You see the sheets in the stores, like 300 uh, sheet count? That means that in the square inch, there are 300 threads in that inch. And so when a man buys the most sophisticated garments, uh, the Italian wool and cotton, uh, when it says a 300 count, it means that there is no kind of air that can prevent the vibrance of that material. The coldest of weather, it keeps you warm. And the hottest of weather, it keeps you cool. And so we loom. I would that thou would be hot or cold. But because you're lukewarm, you say, I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. So we, we, we are This is what the Torah says. We loom the spider's web. We weave. We weave the spider's web to catch. That's what a spider does. I haven't seen my friend in a long time. Maybe he's gone, but I still see some of the webs there. We weave the spider's web, he says, and he that eat their eggs uh, die. We that eat the eggs of the serpent of Nahash, of Bobel, uh, that's why there is no light of Torah in our bosom. That's why there is no ma'or, we don't lighten up when we hear the truth of Yah. To see the great power of his works that he has done. It doesn't excite us, but a damn Walmart does. uh, 
and the damn Kmart does, and the Dollar Mart, and the Store Mart, and the Shoe House does. The damn pile of rugs, and, and, and Walmart does. And then the Dollar Store at all. I'm not going to stop talking the way I talk. I don't care who you are. You get excited about that. We can spend three hours digging in a pile of rags and not 30 minutes in Yastura. I know that's right. So they that eat the eggs of Nahash, of Bobel, the eggs are nourished through the flowing current of the river. And they that eat the eggs, he said, they die. They die prematurely. There's no love for Yah. There is no great sense of connection to Yah. Not at all. He says, uh, not only do they die, and that which is crushed, it breaks out into the viper. And that which is crushed, uh, that which is broken open, uh, it comes up like a poisonous asp, a snake, a serpent. You ever seen someone where their attitude is so poison? They wake up every day, their attitude is poison. You ever seen that? Because they have ruined. They have allowed that spirit to rise up against the correction of Torah against Yah. You ever seen someone that their attitude is always an attitude? You ever seen someone you can't say nothing that there's an attitude that, that, that is uh, flamboyant. It just rises. I don't want to be like that. I don't want to be like that, Yah. If someone at the least of things, they get angry. They have eaten a cockatrice eggs. Uh, and they have died for their love to do right. According to Yahweh, we'll come out of that spirit. Come out of the nature of Bobella. I'm not looking to the Roman whole house. I'm not looking for the seven physical mountains. I'm searching for the rich treasures of Yah that I will lay down my life for. It. It's greater than some physicality of what we think is of Yah. I got you, my friend. You stirred me up this morning. Bring it out. And I shall. The Ruach shall. They loom up. They weave. They exalt. They have loomed this, their own nature. It has emerged. It is beyond one's own ability to control. That is what Babel. That is what confusion is. That is what she is about. And those eggs that you have not been able to eradicate, then they burst open. And then your words are poisonous and vile and evil and sadistic. This book is not written to the world. It's written to its people for us to understand. So Benny Hinn can't tell me nothing about this. T.D. Jakes can't tell me anything. I wouldn't waste y'all's time to listen to one like that for any inspiration. And yet there are those that do. How do I know? Because I get things from people all the time. I, don't send me your damn trash. I don't want your YouTube accounts or things. Don't send it to me. I tell you again. Do not send me that. I don't want it. The singing or whatever, don't send it to me. Don't waste my time. Send an offering. Send an offering. Send some money. That's what we can stay on. Yeah, I said like that. You send me no damn YouTube. I'm not apologetic when it comes to Yah. I'm a pundit. And his judgment is out of the book. Hallelujah. He said their web shall not become garments. There's no covering for them. And all that Nahash does, and, and all that is in the power of, of the mindset of Bobella, we have no covering. We have no covering. Our minds are not covered. We are not at Shalom. We don't have the riches of Yah's Shalom. We don't have his Shalom because there's no covenant with him. That's what Shalom is, is the covenant with the Abba. The covenant, it is the Britsa of Shalom. So we look crazy and we act crazy and we look distance and our minds are distant from him and all of their loom and their webs shall not become garments neither shall they cover themselves with their works you get on the corners all you want to and call yourself a Hebrew and all of that these are not the works of Yah you can allow the wicked to spit on you and say all kinds of things. You say you love Yah. You cast in his pearls before the swines, giving that which is kadosh unto these damn dogs. 
and you think you got works, that's the mind of Bobel. That's what Nimrod said, I will exalt myself above the Torah. I will prove it all out. I'm greater than with the words of Yah. I shall esteem myself. And so people began to come. And those are other nations. That's what the Torah said. They became to worship him. They will bow down and esteem him greatly and lift him up. And there are those that these individuals, they esteem them. They are gods. I don't have no problem with that. But they're certainly not the Mashiach. They come in the women houses that are silly and laid with sin. They have them doing every kind of damnable wicked thing. You are laying with them like a dog laying with another dog. And saying that's all right. It's not all right, Yisrael. Walk around with a piece of paper and say, I got ten wives. These are cowards and jackasses that can't even take care of a singular wife. I lay it down the way the Torah says. You can't show me no one in the Torah where it tells you to have ten wives. We saw the pattern of that with men that were mighty and rich and powerful. What does that express? That's shown, yeah, even with Dawid, uh, he is saying that my, my entourage of the beauty of the women of Tizayon, uh, they come in every array of color, uh, and, the, and the garments are so beautiful. And so these damn dogs have taken that and say, well, I got five wives, right? This is our marriage certificate. Uh, and when I divorce you, I get sick of you. Here's a writing of divorces. They are liars. And the silly women fall for that. They don't love me. You'll be surprised of the people that know of us here. It will surprise you. It will surprise you. Even in these surrounding areas. I like this man. I like his demeanor. I do. I like him. I really like him. I like him. Listen to what the word says. As Bishop would say. Listen to the word. Verse 6, he said, their webs shall not become garments, neither shall they cover themselves with their works. He said, their works are works of iniquity. For they shall say, they shall say to Yahshua, that's Nahash, you Christians, and you damn Jesus thumpers. I've cast out demons, you haven't cast out one damn demon. One shot them. You got some silly woman frolicking and frocking out of her nasty mouth. All this white stuff coming out because her inwards are not clean. This mouth cake like soap in her mouth. And she's flipping and flopping like you cut a snake's head off. Your shoes and many shall come in that day and say, My word speak, I've cast out demons in these little cowards. Oh, I'm casting out demons. You're not casting out nothing, you liar. It's amazing because your shoe, he went to the place he found no imuno. He could do no mighty work there. They didn't even believe him. And yet these folks are casting out demons. Ben Hid. If Ben Hid is casting out demons in Jesus' name, I don't want no part of that. I know what a man hears the Torah of Yah. He sends forth his word like he did to Yisra'ya. Moshe didn't walk around in the name of Joshua. In the name of Yahweh Sattar. No. He was standing in the midst. I can imagine someone hearing his voice from here to Charlotte. But you can hear thunder here in Charlotte, can't you? I can't imagine that, but they did. He didn't have no PA system. When he began to kara, his voice emanated. And the ruach opened the ears of the people. And those that were at the farthest distance, they heard. When Yahshua spoke, his voice was like thunder. They shall come to me and say, we have done many mighty works in your name. Cast out demons, heal the sick. Yahshua says, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I knew you not. I don't know you. So don't write me about you casting out demons, liar. You can tell your most honorable leader he's a liar. In the name of Jesus Christ, he's a damn liar. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says, and the acts of violence is in their hand. These are the same men that say that they cast out demons, uh, and yet they have Hamas. They, they're ready to kill and to bust someone's head. I've heard them say, Let's bust, I'll bust your head. No, no one is going to mess with me. I'm not worrying about them physically altercating or altercation with me. 
I'm not, I am not worried about any man doing that to me because he's not going to touch me. You're not going to touch me, man. You, you may touch them, but you're not going to touch me. Period. They could not lay hands on your shoe until the time was. They sought, but they could not. And yet this power of Babel, this woman that sits upon the seven summits, powerful spirits that operates today to alter the mind of one's thinking. Well, I don't believe that. We don't study. And we just don't know. So my talk is strange. Can I proceed a little bit further? Back to Revelation 17, 5. We're talking about this woman. It says, upon her forehead. Revelation 17, 5. Upon her misach. There was a name written. First of all, it was left mystery, that which is secretive, and that which is based upon enchantment or bewitching, seducing the mind, and that which is kept silent, that no one knows but those that are in the hierarchy of that chain of spiritual Preference as Yah has elected, so has Hashatan. He takes out of the base where Yah says, I don't even want it. He has elected. I want to stop there for a moment. It says here in Revelation 17, 5, and upon her forehead, upon her mesach, in order to understand depths of that, you listen to the messages on the number 666, all right? Now, why is it that this was so noticeable on her forehead? What does the Mesach represent? Why is that vitally important to understand even the smallest knowledge of that? You hold that in Revelation. And let us see what is in Shemoth, Exodus. Exodus. Chapter 28. And I want to begin reading here in verse 36. The forehead. The forehead. The mesach. Of uh, Aharun. Or ha Aharun. Aharun. It says in Exodus 28:36, Yah says, and you shall make a plate of pure gold. Pure gold now. For what? The maeta. And grave upon it. The Yah says, I want you to engrave it. Engraving uh, a signet on that. Kodesh li or Kodesh to Yah. That shall be. And I saw those on Mount Sion. And with him was 144,000. With his Abbas, Hashem, his father's name, written in their forehead. Revelation 14. I saw that. I, uh, I inspected that with my eyes. I could see that. That's what your Kohan said. So it is the image of the Kohan and the high Kohan. Like Harun, Aaron, so it is with Yahshua Hamashiach. Why? Because Yah is the He. He is the Rush of Yahshua. Yahshua is the Rush. He is the summit of man. And man is the summit. A woman, I want to inject this daughter's. Your rebellionness, your wickedness, your sins, your mouth will take you to hell. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you think. This time out, you better get it right. And that's a fact. Yah has an order. He is the supreme. And the power of his living word in your sure that body. And he has entrusted that to man. I love you, daughters. He didn't entrust that to you. He entrusted that to man. For it was the woman that transgressed. You don't get a set with it. That's all right. I say that because I care for you. Not trying to get in bed with no one. Never have. Promise you that.
because I care for you. Hallelujah. So there was a mitre, a turban on the head of Aharun, Aharun. Yah said it must be a pure gold. The pure gold represents the, the purity of one tried, the purpose and the heart being tried for, for the purpose of Yah. He said, I want you to grave upon it, Exodus 28, 36. He said, of a signet, Kodash to Yah or Kodash Li Yahweh. And he says, and you shall put on it a blue lace, that it may be upon the mitre, the head covering. The head covering. When I saw this woman written in her Meshach, it must be upon the mitre, upon, upon, upon the forefront of the mitre, it shall be. And it shall be, and it shall be, verse 38, and it shall be upon the head of a Harun forehead. It shall be upon the forehead or the Mesach. And I saw the writing in her forehead. Why is the writing that? Because it's a, it's a superficial uh, thing to make one think that one is safe. It Yah says, I, I wore it on the forehead of a Harun uh, that a Harun. Uh, May bear, may bear, may bear the iniquity, may bear the iniquity of the Kodesh things. He may bear the sin. He may bring the sin before the nation of his people. That's why they tried to put a batter on Yahshua's head. But he was the king of Yisrael. You understand? And that's what she has done, Bobel. She has put a batter on our head. They say he is not king forever that says that he does not live that tell us to walk in our own intuitiveness and in our own intuition that we are bright and we are smart that's what she has done that's what this uh, that's what this live here has done and you think you're right and you know you're wrong and you go beyond the channels uh, and the aura of what your commands uh, you're wrong you're wrong Again in Exodus 28, 38. And it shall be upon a Harun's forehead, his Mesach, that a Harun may bear the iniquity of the Kodesh things. Why? Which the children of Yisrael shall be set apart in all of their Kodesh gifts. And it shall be always, and it shall be always, where? Upon his forehead. He was the Hi, Kohan. With the Gadol, Hagadol, Kohan. He was the one that interceded for Yisraya. And so this, this, this mindset in our the secretive uh, nature, that's why we are so secretive. I don't have to be secretive about nothing. The only time we are secretive is because there is something in us that we don't want nobody to know it. And that's a damn fact. You are the closest to the breath. You ought to hide your wickedness. And so you share it among your cohorts. I want my life to shine. I want my light to shine that men may see not my tough works, but his tough works in me. That they may honor Yah, that they may lift it up. And under the power of this barbell, when you began to ascend, when you began to climb the summits, there you receive the anointing. I'll show you what I mean as I continue. You go up one, come down. You go up the other one until you finish the course. And once you do that, your mind, you have no mind. The Torah is allegory. And it's all so figurative. But everything is true. Everything is true. Everything is true. Hallelujah. He says that it should always be upon his forehead. That they may be accepted before you. It must always be there. The mitre, the covering. Your shoe must always be on our forehead. Woman, don't be silly. Don't you know it is the man that your shach delivers your house? In that regard unto him must always be in your forehead. Damn it, the world has twisted you and made you one lady like it. You're not even a woman anymore. You're a beast of a thing. You act like a beast. You talk like one. 
And that's just a fact. I understand we got these weak, shallow things they call themselves men. They're not men. Only a wise wife would be given unto. He, he, that should be the jewel of a wise man. It is only granted unto men. The Yah grants that jewel and that gem. Here, men that are stuffy and mean as hell thinking they're going to get a wise wife, you're not going to get anything from Yah. That you daughters of Tizan, you're on that. You're moody and you're fickle as hell. You think you're going to get? A, you're not going to get anything. You may get a man. They give you some superficial emotions, but that's not a man. Boys do that. I sure hope y'all send her a husband or send him a wife. No, you get on your face and pray and help her to be a wife and you strengthen the mind to understand the beauty of a man. That's how you do it. Y'all withhold no tough thing from them that walk upright. I believe that. Preach on. Preach a man. The might upon the forehead of this woman. She has written, first of all, we know what was in the forehead of Harun. That he must cover for the iniquity of the people of Yah. This whore doesn't cover for your iniquities. This mind doesn't cover you. It exposes you. You have weaved your garments. You have loomed up. You have said, look how nice I look. Look at my fine garments. Look at the cockatrice, cockatrice shells uh, and my wickedness. Look what I've made me. Look at this nice garment I've made. Look what I've done. And don't even realize that you got cockatrice, you got vile affection in your heart. And when it, when, it, when it comes to pass, when it hatches out, you are more wicked than what you were before you ever heard of Yah. That's a fact. You're nasty, you're wicked, you're vile, that's the way we are. This is not talking to the wicked. It's not talking to the world, it's talking to a house that's rebellious. A house that whose, whose iniquity has separated us from Yah. It's our own iniquity. That's why we don't have no love for prayer. It's not Popel. It's not Babylon. We separate our time from you. We just don't love him. And that's a fact. Rats on mystery in our forehead. Uh, that this lot mystery is secretive. Uh, and we are secretive. Are we not? Uh, let's get together. Let's hatch out something. That's what we do. We hatch our cockatrice, uh, cockatrice. We hatch our cockatrice eggs and we loom it together. You take a little he says and a little she says and a little they say and you loom that and you weave that uh, and it becomes your garment of covering. Uh, and so when you see me, it's like, huh, he think he don't know what I know. I know you're wicked, man. You're a shallow little boy. So you have, you have weave your garments together and I say, you're still naked. Yah says, you're naked before me. You are unclean. This is the real deal and true teaching. This is what it's going to take to get into the kingdom. Well, your verbiage is harsh. I'm glad it's that way. And I'm not changing anything. Hallelujah. He says, I saw this and then I saw Bobel the Great. This is in her Mesach. In her forehead. Now for clarity of the word Mesach, I give you the Hebraic definitive, all right? Now this is what it means. Now hear me. It means to be clear. See, that was engraved in gold and, and the blue ribbons held from that. So you, you had no doubt what was on his forehead. To be clear, to be conspicuous, it has negative indications too. To be a haughty thing. We're not haughty, are we not? Yeah. To be a proud thing. And above all that, to have largeness. I'm larger than you. I'm smarter than you. I'm prettier than you. I'm finer than you, man. That's what means in our foreheads. This is what lifts us up. This is what exalts us here. 
And you're larger than anyone else. You have largeness. You're greater. You're full of pride. Isn't this the nature of Nimrod? He rose up and said, I will ascend to you. He was an elect of Hashatan. Because that's what Hashatan says. I will ascend above the great clouds, the covering of Yah's people, into his kingdom, to the side of the north, into the high place. Now tell me, tell me, show me the mountain that reaches into the heavens. Show me one. Oh, you may have clouds because the Lord ascended at certain times of the year, but there's not one. And that's what Nimrod said. That's what our mind, we want to allow our minds to ascend into the heavens of Yah, into his throne, and say, I defy you. That's what Livyathan says, because it is pompous, it's full of pride. And as we complete the ascending of the seven summits of this woman, when you come to the bottom, you're not getting to Yah. It is the law of completion. That's what seven is. It is the perfect order, whether it's negative or positive, it has been established. The mind has been changed, it has been altered. I will prove it in scripture. Hallelujah. And so, Babel, the great, two aspects of her. She is the mother of harlotry. I'm going to stop there because I want to work on this today. I'm not going to have time out of abominations. But I want to work on that hollow tree. I want to work on that a while, all right? She is this Kedeshaw. She is the mother of temple prostitutes. That we prostitute ourselves for what? We sell ourselves for our emotions. For some large experience we think is large. She is the mother of Zena, of Halatri. There is in the midst of that Halatri, the spirit that bewitches the mind. It is satanic. It is out of the order of hell. <clears throat> and she was written, first of all, mystery. That was the first thing he saw on her forehead, mystery. Do we know what the mystery is? It is so simple that we, we don't even know. Oh, I'm going to tell you because I love you. I'm not here for money. Sin and offering. Hypocrite. <clears throat> Those that are not hypocrites, they're sinning. You know. It's amazing that some of the people that I hear from at times, and they never contact me. They, they preach on preaching. The first emblem he saw on her head was mystery. You can tell the nature of Bobel. You can tell her strength. She's one that operates in the most secretive mysteries. Here is the prophet of our age that speaks so directly to us. Hanak is his name, Enoch. I want you all to hear this. I want to show you what that mystery is. I want to show you what that mystery is. It is so simple that it is appalling that we as students don't know. And so when someone speaks to us to confirm truth, we get upset. Just like the fool said that, as I saw Cain said, he said, well, react or try to outshine. No, I don't have to try to outshine no man. I'm going to outshine the young men. I'm going to speak more precise with much more adequate than them. I speak from a plethora of wisdom and years of experience. They're not going to speak like me. And I'm going to outshine them. My is going to illuminate greater than theirs. And that's the way it should be. The Harun outshined all of the Levi. They were all serving the house. But he outshone them. And I will. Go who he is. I will always outshine you. Always. That's the compliment to you. Because you will shine. 
And the light grows more pronounced day by day in our fellowship. We got work tomorrow, you and me, half a day. I know you'll put it out. Give me a half a day. Hard work. I'm going to outshine the older men that have not labored and been caretakers. It's just a fact. What's wrong with that? When someone goes to the corporation, they don't look for the employee, they look for the CEO. The general always outshines the colonel. And the colonel outshines the lieutenant colonel. And the lieutenant colonel outshines the major. And the major outshines the captain. And the captain outshines uh, the first lieutenant. And the first lieutenant outshines the second lieutenant. And the se second lieutenant outshines warrant officer four. And the warrant officer four out down through the ranks. There are many master sergeants or sergeant majors uh, in the military army. But there is only one sergeant major of the army. That resides in the Pentagon. Only one. He's like a general of the enlisted men. There are many Marines that are powerful men, physical, and, and understand things. But there's only one sergeant major or major sergeant of the Marines. One. And he sits in Washington, D.C. Only one. Although there are others. Uh, although there are others. Uh, and when he come in the midst, I guarantee his uniform is more tailored. When he comes to the midst of them, his clothing, look, I'm telling you, Yisrael, I've seen it. I've been in the military. You understand, man? I've been there. So his clothing always outshined. The fit of his clothing is different than the other sergeant majors. Only one. Only one. Only one. And he outshines them all. So the damn fool will never shine. Never. A fool never shines. Because a fool has conceived that he or she has it. I'm glad I don't have it. I'm not trying to get it all either. I just want to take what he has given me. Trust that and believe it. That's all. Moving quickly, the book of Hanak. What is the mystery? What is this mystery that he saw in her forehead? And I want to show us the process of this. Hanak 104, verse 9. Yah commands us. Do not become wicked in your levim, your hearts, or lie. Don't lie, Yisraya. Just don't lie. Don't alter anything. If you don't know, say, I don't know. But don't lie. Don't become wicked in your hearts, Risha, and don't lie. Or alter the words of that which is just, Sadiq, and true, Yosha. Don't try to alter the words of the just. Someone says something, you alter what one says. Come on, Yisraya. I said to my Ak Shimri as we talk at times, quite often, frequently. I said, you know, Shimri, I've been, a, I've been a wicked man all my life. And I have no righteousness that I can, that I can say that I have, uh, I have produced. But it was one thing about me. I have never been a prolific liar. I, I, I just could not do that. I could not just lie, even though if I was caught, okay, come on, dog, you, 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 hey, what's up, baby, I, I was wrong. I've never been like that. I've never, I, I, my conscience would not allow me. It has always troubled me to lie. When I lied, I had trouble. I couldn't, it just didn't, it just wasn't right. I knew it wasn't right. And I was a wicked man. That's why I tried to say things precisely the way I hear it. And what I don't, I would say, I don't know, is that that? And there are those that will lie. Just like the dog said that I oppress you all and malicious to the people of Yah. And there are you that fell in love with him. Isn't that amazing? He says in Hanak 104.9, he said, don't utter falsehood against the words of Yah the Great. Don't utter words that you don't know, you don't understand. Don't say nothing if you don't know. Just be quiet. He says, I'm the Kodash one. Or give praise to your idols. Don't say that I'm strong, I'm mighty. This is the power of Bobella. That's what Nimrod said. That's what we say. That's what we say. I'm strong. I know. I know as much as you know. 
I've had men to tell me that, and they were shallow and weak as ducks urine. They didn't know anything. He says, or oh, give praise to your idols, uh, for all your lies and your wickedness uh, are not for righteousness, but for great sin. So you tell me this one that in her mesach, the words mystery loved, her silence, uh, her arrogance, her superficial mindset, Yah says, no, nah, it's you doing that because you love to sin. You love to defy what Torah says. He says, and now, this is what Hanak says to the messenger. And now I know this mystery, this lot, this secretive thing, this thing that, that caused to the power of enchantment, caused the mind to turn away from Yah and truth. For he says, and the, he says, for I know this mystery, for they, the sinners, uh, shall alter the just verdict. And many sinners will take it to heart. They will speak evil words now, and they will lie. That's the mystery now. We will lie, we will speak evil words, we lie without conscience, uh, no fear of li lying. And no liars entering to the kingdom. No liar, no murderer. There's nothing more vile than a liar. And this is what Bobel, this is how Nimrod lied. That he had to have power to, through enchantment to bewitch the minds of the people. I'll show you how he did it. Look what he says. He said, and they will invent fictitious doctrines and teachings and lies. They will invent fictitious stories and write out my chitve. He forgot it. The Baptist did that the Methodists, uh, those that call themselves Hebrews, they have forgotten it. It's amazing that you got Hebrews on this corner. Hebrews over there and they're both raising hell at each other. They tell him he can't say the name right and he say that he can't. A bunch of little nutty boys out there, braided up hand, dreadlocks, looking silly as hell. Uh, that's what they look like. Turn there. You, you know, if, if I wanted to, I could go and say, okay, I, I'll take my scripture. No, no, we're going to talk about this. See, and they go back to the same regiment. That's all they do. And the people there, the, the people get aroused with them and want to fight. See, that's where they mess up. Little old young boys that still wet behind their ear. Got stains in their undergarments. That's right. They will invent fictitious story. What is that? Well, Jesus Christ saves you. Jesus Christ is a lie. They invented this damnable love, this idol of an image. There's only one name given to remove our hearts away from his Hamashiach. He said they will invent fictitious stories. They will write out my scriptures on basis of what their own words. What well, I believe is this way. This is the power of her mystery. To make you alter what Torah says. Well, I don't see where I'm wrong. You're wrong, daughter. Son, you're wrong. Just say you're wrong and say, help me, Yah. You're wrong, mother. You're wrong, father. You're wrong. You're not right. It is the Torah of Yah. That's why we don't go there to correct us. We're wrong. You go to the book, as Bishop would say. Let's go to the book. You must go to the book. This is the mystery of the lots that when he saw, he saw this. What is this mystery? Well, Harak says, I got it for you. Hallelujah. They will write out scriptures on the basis of their own word. You got a group of Hebrews over here that call themselves. Uh, interpreting it that way, you got another group there. That's their corner and that's their corner. And down there is their corner. And they despise each other. And every one of them think that they are right. They're all wrong. They are not the sons of Ibram. They're liars and corruptors. They have rushed the scriptures to their own destruction. I saw the writing mystery, not secretive. He says, and I would that they had written down all the words truthfully. That's what Nimrod did. He said, I know what Yah says. I know, giving me power, made me rule of the whole Olam. But I'm great. I'm mighty. See, they have not written down the words truthfully. 
religious whole houses didn't write down the words truthfully. Our Baptist whole houses didn't write it down truthfully. Our Methodist whole houses didn't write it down truthfully. So if there's a little leaven in it, it's not the truth, it is a whole lie. So you got to get rid of it all. You got to get rid of it all. You got to empty yourself of that untruthfulness and the lies. You got to empty yourself of the Baptist ways uh, and the Methodist ways and the Jesus Christ ways uh, that you may come into the knowledge of Torah, of truth. Yeah. Hallelujah. Listen to this now. Hallelujah. They have written down all the words. They have written down, and what they, they had written down all the words truthfully on the basis uh, of their own speech, own possession. Well, nobody tells me what to say. You ever heard that? I'm my own man. I'm my own woman. You don't tell me. So they've gone by their own words. And they don't even know the definitive of words. At least I will try to explain and define the, the words that I utilize. That's why I am a one word teacher, preacher. I don't broad or strat or strata of the stratosphere. I stay on the one thing that, that, that y'all puts in my heart to bring clarity. And if you get that clear, then the other thing will come clearer. And the other thing, and the other thing, we must get this clear. Yeah. But their own speech. He said, and neither alter nor take away my word. Is that what Barbael has done? See, that's why they're giving attention to the Catholic whore. Well, she has changed everything. She gave you Jesus too. She gave you the damn name of Jesus. You can say what you want to. You can say King James was a black man and he gave that. That's a damn lie. And those interpreters of the Torah knew no Jesus. They knew Jesus. Jesus is just a fuck. That's a modern day rendition. Hallelujah. He said there, and neither alter nor take away my words, all of which I testified to them from the beginning. Yah has established, it's one thing that his word is forever established in the heavens. And that's what Nahash does. It began to interpret, that's the power of Bobel. You know that you have ascended to the summits when you began to interpret things of your own accord. There are everybody, no one is willing to sit under anyone because they know everything. That's, to me, that's crazy. It's almost like a Psalm 22 telling his dad, I know what life is about. You're silly, boy. It's almost like a girl with one child that she can tell mama, mama, here mama's 65, and she's going to tell mama, mama, I know about what I'm doing. You don't know a damn thing. It's amazing because in all your, all your struggles, you still come back to mama. In all your trials, you got to come back to mama, but you know my mama, no, you know how to do all that. You don't know a damn thing, you foolish woman, no? You stupid bimbo. Son telling his daddy, daddy, sit down quiet, can't talk like you, uneducated old man. But he says, boy, I, I, I know it's right, though, boy. I know what is the best thing. His daddy, through his wisdom, have experienced uh, the plot free uh, of onslaught of adversity in life. And you little jackass think you're going to tell him uh, he commands you to honor. Yeah. I can see why people don't like that man. That's all right. You love me. It says this. I want you to hear this. He says to us in Hanak 104 verse 12. And know also another mystery. This is for you that are sadiq to the righteous. And the wise shall Yah give the chitve, the scripture of joy. That's why in her forehead is written mystery because there is no joy in her life. There's no joy in her doctrines, her teachings, uh, her manifestos. He said, I want you to know another mystery, that Yah's going to give his people, his nation, uh, the scripture, the kitve of joy, of joy. He's going to give us that, that we can rejoice. He's going to give us the scriptures of joy. That's what, that's the mystery, see. And I saw written the mystery lots in her forehead. Uh, he saw that before he saw the other attributes. Uh, we got to deal with each attribute. Now, uh, what I'm trying to do is open the door that we can go beyond that. I can teach on this for the next two or three years, but I don't have time. He says, uh, and know another mystery, uh, that to the righteous and the wise shall be given no fun bestowed upon them, uh, the scripture of joy for truth. 
That's why we have the key way for truth, uh, for truth uh, and great, not just any kind of wisdom, but God all great wisdom. Wisdom that profit, wisdom that produce, uh, wisdom that is profitable, wisdom that has uh, the manifesto of Yan Yoshua in that wisdom. Uh. Not just any kind of wisdom, but great wisdom. That we understand the power of Nahash. Understand this whore. You know who Bobel is. You take counsel from the wisdom of Biddy Head and T.D. Jakes. These lawyers, you Baptist whole house. He's given us the scripture that we may have great wisdom. Not just any kind of wisdom, but great wisdom. Abundantly rabbah with much, with, with, with sustaining power. That even through our trials, our wisdom is so great, it causes us to sustain, to trust y'all, to have confidence. Yeah. So then, so to them shall be given the scripture, and they shall believe them. They're going to believe the scripture. Yeah. See, to you is given the scripture today. You that will listen to this in whatever form, to you today the scripture is given. Uh, he said, you're going to believe them. Uh, listen, and, uh, and all the righteous ones... Who learn from them the ways of truth shall rejoice. See, that's the mystery. Her mesach, written in her forehead. Also in the forehead of Aharon, was there not a, a, a signet? To Yah everlasting or Yah li olam vi answer? That's what was written in the might of uh, Harun. Yeah. And to the righteous shall be given the wisdom of Torah. That we will understand who Bobel is. We will understand the mysteries of this woman. We will see her ways and her deeds. There will be men that, uh, with elocution that they can, they can teach us and show us. Uh, and teach precisely line upon line, 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 precept, precept, hill, little, hill, little, there, there. They can teach us that way. I don't ever want to have, I've never had that kind of pride uh, that I can't learn. I learn from those uh, that do not speak as well as me. That's a fact. I learn from those that do not have the elocution that I have. I learn from those that do not have the poise uh, or the mannerism. I don't, I don't see that mess. I see what and hear what they're saying. And I find the nuggets, the truth, I don't care who it is. I always find the essence and the element of the power of truth there. And sometimes I want to write that down. Oh, he missed that one. I want to teach that. Wow, he said that. I would be a fool to think that I'm above Torah. And that's the way this world is. See, that's the mystery, the great mystery. That's the mystery that this core doesn't share. Yah shares the mystery. I'll show you another mystery. I'm going to make the scriptures known to you. Bobel can't do that. The Catholic whole house can't do that. These little... The miniature Hebrews, they call themselves, they can't do that. These damn Jesus thumpers, they can't do it. You're listening to the Ruach speech today. Now, you said to us, man, it is somewhat of the altar of the mind and the spirit of one. I search things in patterns. I search things numerically. I cross-reference. And I search a lot, and I research. I don't have no books. I have some excellent dictionaries, and that's all I use. I don't try to visit websites to find something. Well, this is of your own. No, this is of the Ru'ak. See, my line upon line is adding up, and the words. I want to show you one of the most, one of the most phenomenal things in the Brit Hadassah. Everything is phenomenal in the book. But how we miss this, and how that you heard Many teach on this and talk about the sons of Siva, Skifa. I want you to hear this. I want to show you something here in, 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 in the book of Acts. Ma'aseth Shulishim. The sons of Shik'u'ah. Shik'u'ah. I'm this way. I want to understand who Shik'u'ah is. And what is his relevance? What does his name imply? And his name implies the power to read the mind. Unquote. Listen to this. Acts 19.13. He said, then there were certain vagabonds, those that were wanderers. Uh, they were not Gentiles. 
They were not heathens, but they were of the tribe of Yehuda, Yehuda. And they called themselves Ashaf or Exorcists. You found that today we cast out demons. Uh, who come up with that? The Catholic whole house. You got everybody casting out demons. The same. These men are teaching nothing no different than the Catholic whole house. The Catholic whole house say you must be exorcised. There must be an exorcist. And these whole houses, that's all it's about. We got to cast out demons. Cast out demons. They're not casting out anything. Uh, but there were sons. They were vagabonds. Uh, it says... Uh, the sons of, uh, the sons of uh, uh, Shi'u, they took upon themselves uh, to call over the one that had the evil spirits, uh, the name of Yahshua, saying, uh, we are Jew, we rebuke you by Yahshua HaMashiach, whom Shaul preaches. It says, and the seven sons, how many were there? Seven. And there are seven heads that represent seven mountains. A head is the compartment where everything is administered. It is the rush. It is where the process of thinking and, and it carries out the administration of the whole body. Everything must come from here. So there must be powerful head powers or demons or spirits uh, that rule uh, from a high place. From, from a summit from a summit of Bobel. Out of the mindset of Nimrod. It must be. Because he did not get that mindset he got from just his logics. It had to come. It had to come from those that had fallen cast down from the heavens. To try to give the wisdom of the whole infrastructure of Yah. I want you all to listen to what I'm preaching. Don't worry about reading. Listen to this. He said there were seven sons of... Of, of Skifa or Sikhu, it says they called them over uh, 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 and, uh, and uh, there were seven sons, uh, uh, Yehuda, the chief of the Kohim, which did so. Now, this was the chief of the Kohim. Kohim. Was he not? Was, was he not? And yet he had seven unclean spirits that could read the minds of the people, knew what the people wanted. It was through the power of enchantment. And when they dealt with the real deal, they had no power to read. They had no power to, 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 to bind. And we know what the story, what, what, the, what, the, what the account of this says. How that the, the demons beat them and they beat them until they were naked. They had no covering. Our covering is Yoshua HaMashiach. What? Our minds must be covered. Our minds must be covered by Torah. And you will never come to the power of the knowledge of the Torah unless you have the ability to hear. You see that? Many of you all, that's why I don't like to tell you what. You, you want to sit here, you want to read instead of hear. The emuna comes by hearing. It doesn't come by reading. You got to hear. He that have ear, let him hear what the Ruach says. You understand? You want to read and you have got no knowledge in all of your reading. It's time that you began to hear. And listen to what the messenger says. That's your problem. You've read it as some kind of story. I bring the revelation of it. These are the sons that altered the minds of those of, of Yehuda. He was a chief Kohan. He was a messenger. He was the one that wore the mitre. Just like a Harun. And you think that you have the mitre. You think that your wisdom is pronounced and you're smart and you're wise. We must hear. We must shimmer. Wasted time reading. You haven't produced nothing. Hear. Hear. Here, here, call Yisraya. Yah is Ikar. That is the first commandment. Hear the voice of Yah. You must learn how to hear, man. You all the ones, you better learn how to start hearing. You better start learning how to hear. That's your problem. That's why you will never progress. Stop your reading out there. Put it down. Just listen. And then you go back and you examine what I said. Yeah. Sit down at night with mom and dad. Read that thing again. Yeah. 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 Zakane Davis, he said one day, he said, Riyank, we were sitting here doing just that until you said, put it down. He said, oh my. Shut the books, put it all down. Just listen. 
because when we finish here, it will be 11 a.m. there. And they'll sit down for the rest of the day and go back over those things. He'll make copies and take, he'd take copies of these messages to people in every kind of whole house they're in. They'll say to him, where, where, where's, my, where's, my, where's that preacher? Give me that message. He says, amazing, isn't it, Rayak? But they will run me down and be the path because they want the CDs. You think they will send a nickel here or bless him? He buys and he does that faithfully. He sends offerings, those that are there with him. And he does it faithfully. Proceeding. I want you all to hear me, all right? So these are the seven sons of Sikua. It is the mind really the power of witchcraft. They cannot cast out. They cannot overcharge those demons. You, you know you got a weak demon in you that every time someone come into your whole house, you got to cast out the same demon. You got to keep casting out the same demon. When your sure comes into a house, he cleans that bad boy. Take not no more demons there. And every time you got to cast out the same demon, the woman gets up and does the same thing. I mean, as a young boy, we seen the movie Exorcist. That heifer was spitting out everything out of mouth. Nasty cow. Nasty old thing. You see the same thing in these whole houses. Something gets wrong with you. You got all this spew coming out of you. It's a nasty spirit. Your Jesus is nasty. Nasty thing like that. It doesn't come out of me like that. I'll clean my belly out if I got something like that in me. Hallelujah. The seven sons of Shifa, of Shifa. I want you all to hear what we must earnestly do. We got to repent. We must seek Yah. There's a reason why. Hear this now. Amos, Amos, Amos 5 8. I want to show you something here now. We're dealing with the seven mountains. I want to show you something what these mountains represent. Amos chapter 5. And verse 8, he tells us who to seek. He said, I want you to seek him that made the seven stars uh, of Kessel or Orion. Do you hear that? He is the one that has made the seven stars of Orion. Why? Because the seven stars are vital and important. She sits on seven rush. She has a mindset that bewitched to alter, to bring about enchantment and sorcery, to create some of the most vilest of substance uh, that it kills a body and a mind. You must come out of Bobel. You coming, moving from America to, to that little strip of land, you're just as wicked as you were when you left. Well, there's a different spirit that knows it's the same spirit. The same spirit. It is the rule and the power of Bobel. The cheaters and robbers, you go to places there, I've heard there are two prices. Uh, one for those that, uh, that, that are Jews, uh, one for those that are black, and one for those that are that, and one for those that are foreigners. And then you negotiate how corrupt it is. And you think you, the biggest faggot day celebration is there, faggots everywhere. The most prominent men of what we call Jews in America, faggots. The faggots say what you want to. The networks are promoting, promoting this faggotism uh, like it's candid feeding your babies. Uh, and you send them to these damnable schools to tell them it's all right and teaching them things that are so filthy and so vile. My days, you never heard of a teacher raping the children. These freaks in the schools. There was Zara! You put your babies under the hands of these dogs. Uh, and was honor. The teachers were honorable people. They lived in our communities. They were honorable. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amos said, but seek him that made the seven stars of Orion. Not only that, he turns the shadows of death into morning. When death is upon him, he has turned that into morning. Why? And he makes the day dark with night. That caused the waters of the sea. 
and pours them out upon the face of the earth, it tells us that Yah is His name. Yah is His name. We are the Kassel, we are the simpletons and the silly ones of the Yah is His name. He made the seven stars of Orion. Why? What's in His right hand? She has seven heads, which are the seven Chara, Acha, mountains, the summits, the great plateaus, the, I mean the great height, the zenith, the points. She has seven points. That when a man is given over unto that, it was one thing that I learned when I went into the mason tree. Yeah, I did. I was, I was like 21, 22 years old. I was ignorant. Still I am. And you had to get to a certain degree. When you got to the seventh degree, then they began to open up the mysteries. You had to get to the third degree in order to go into the house. And it was a demonic. I went in there one time and never went back. I thought that these were men that were honorable and their mouths were filthy as dogs. Everything was extorting and taking advantage of women. That's all it was. And I certainly wasn't about to do that. A young man married a year, year and a half. I didn't participate in their activities. Not one of the activities that I participated in. When I got to the seventh degree, I said, this is it for me. And I just quit and never went back and paid no dues at all. You understand? Hallelujah. Now, I want you to hear this in Giliana Revelation. I must move a little quick, okay, because I want to finish this. Revelation chapter 1, verse 16. It says, in the hand of Yah, we must seek him that made the seven stars of Orion. What is that implying? Because there is light. What he is saying, there's a power that resonates from Yah. And we understand this in Revelation. We're dealing with them with the seven that, that combats the seven heads of this woman. You understand? He says in Revelation 1, 16, and he had in his right hand seven stars. And Amos talks about the seven stars of Orion, doesn't he? He had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. And the countenance of Almighty Yah was as the sun shining in his strength. I don't know if you've ever seen the sun or tried to look at it. In his strength, when it reaches its zenith in the summertime here. If you can look at that thing over three seconds, you are bad to the bone. It will burn your iris. You will be blind before you realize it. It also leaves a little dark spot in your eye, doesn't it? And if you're not careful, it will burn the iris and you will, you will go blind. That's the brightness of Yah. That is what his Ruachim represent. The powerful spirit. And so the seven heads of these spiritual powers uh, that rest in this woman's bosom, uh, they're sent forth to fight against the Ruach HaKodash. Uh, to change the very element of our minds, to turn us away from Yah. We're not dealing with some damn seven mountains there in the Roman whole house. Uh, it's greater than that. Yisrael, hallelujah. He says, not only that in verse 30, in, in verse 16, uh, well, what is or who are, what does the seven stars represent? A God. Yochanan saw the word mystery on her head. He says in verse 20 of the same chapter, Revelation 1 20. Hear this, Revelation 1 20. The mystery. The mystery of the seven stars, stars which you saw, y'all said, in my right hand, he got his nation in his hand. He says, in the golden, seven golden candlesticks of the menorah, he said, the seven stars of the Melachim, of the seven congregation, and the seven candlesticks that you saw are the seven congregation through the aura of time the era of time you have seen the manifestation of each of these great assemblies propagated among men and now we see the mind of the Laodicean that they will rule everybody knows everything everybody's in command they defy the elders they defy Yatru. we're in that period 
Everybody defies the elders. Everyone knows more than those that have labored uh, and, uh, and that have intense, intense labored in the Torah. And yet they, they don't labor, but they know more than everyone. That's silly to me. That is so dumb. It is so dumb, Yisrael. Yeah. Hallelujah. How can you watch television all day and go tell me the things of you? I won't let you do it. Hallelujah. She has seven heads, which are seven mountains. Now, how can a head be a mountain? That's what he said. The seven heads are seven mountains. What about the heads? What about the rush? Now, you can only see the seven heads of what we call the Catholic whole house. What are the seven heads that rule the Catholic whole house? What are the orders? It's not so, Yisrael. We're dealing with something deeper than that. Yeah. Moving expeditiously. Zechariah. The seven lamps. I want to open that up. Hallelujah. Look what it says in Zechariah. Zechariah chapter 3 verse 9. It says, For behold, the stone that I would have laid before Yahshua, and Yahshua is the stone that he laid before Yahshua. Upon one stone shall be seven eyes. What are the seven eyes? The Ruachim of Yah. Behold, I will engrave. Did he not say engrave it in the Mesach on the forehead of a Harun? Where was not the name of the Abba engraved in the head of those that were the one under 44,000? Was not this woman, and I saw written her engraved in a forehead mystery. Lots. Yah says, I will engrave the graven thereof, says Yah of Sava. I will see why. Because the, the Mesach of Harum was uh, to protect and to wipe away the iniquity of the people of Yah. Was it not? And Yah says, I will remove the iniquity of the land in that one day. That's what it's about. This woman doesn't remove your iniquity. She calls iniquity to come forth. She is the mother. She is the mother that uh, incubates the cockatrice eggs in your mind. And you weave that with spider webs. And that's your garment and your nakedness is not covered. It's, it's almost like in the old days the people would say, I can read you. I see clean through you. I know what you're about. Yet we don't know what one another is about. Yet they in their days could see clean through you. And they had no knowledge of you. They were just decent, honest, sensible people. That's all they were. But they could read you like a book, honey. Seven Ruachim, Revelation, chapter 4, verse 5. Revelation, Giliana. And out of the throne of Almighty Yah, Revelation, chapter 4, verse 5. There was this great power of lightning and this thunderous, powerful sound of voices. It did not say voice, does it? Voices. Voices. Hul, the substance of Yah. He said, and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne. There were seven lights of fire. Burning before the curse of Yah, which are, which are the seven Ruachim, the seven spirits of Almighty Yahweh. Seven. And her rush upon her head, at her head, at her head, and here is the mind of wisdom, the seven heads are seven Chara, which the woman sits on. And before the Kaseh of Yah was the seven Rachim. There, there are certain characteristics of this kingdom that she sits upon them. She, your shop, she doesn't change it for anyone. I don't care for your babies, for you. You will kill your baby before she changes. That's what she says. She dwells there. There are seven principles. They're not principles, but I use that to give us understanding. There are seven rules of her law. There are seven rules of her law that she will not alter that. She doesn't change that for anyone. There are laws in our minds. We say, I ain't changing for nobody. Yeah. Ain't nobody going to make me change. I believe it. It's self it. Baby, you can't tell me. I know the law. I say, ain't not going to change. You ever heard that? Yeah. I have. Hallelujah. Yeah. 
You can cry until you there are no tears in your tear duct. Hallelujah. These are the seven Ruachim of Yah. So she presents a head is square what dwells. Knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. It says that her head, her rush, are seven mountains. She must try to emulate and falsify her ways to present unto the nation Yisraya a superficial order that we will be drawn unto that thinking that we're following the Most High. Here is the mind of wisdom. What is the mind of wisdom? What is the composition of the mind of wisdom? Do we know that? I'll show us, all right? Hallelujah. There are seven powerful principles of the mind of wisdom. It says under the mandate of Shalomo Mishli, Proverbs 9.1, Proverbs 9 1, Proverbs 9 1, it says, Hook my wisdom. This is how wisdom build the strength in the bed. Wisdom has built her house. This is what she has done. She has hewn, she has, uh, she has shapen seven pillars uh, or uh, moods. She has shapen the seven pillars. She sits upon seven mountains. She has seven pillars of her wisdom. That's what it's about, that we must come out of her wisdom, Yisraya, her Amun. What are the seven pillars of Yah's wisdom? It's found easily here in the book of Yaakov, in the Brit Hadassah. James, James, oh, I will make, show you the end of this for today. It will all make sense. Listen to it again. Yaakov, chapter 3, verse 17. It said, but the wisdom, uh, it says seven pillars, right? But the wisdom, James 3.17, but the wisdom that is from above is first pure. See, when a man speaks of the pure wisdom of Yah, when a man has the purity of Yah's sadiq in him, that is the first sign of wisdom, a man is pure. You can see a clean man, you, can, you know a man that is clean, he's pure in his heart. It's first of all pure, then it's full of shalom, it's peaceable. It is very gentle. It understands what we need. You think that because a mother spanks that child, she's not gentle? Does Yah correct us with the rod of correction? Is he gentle? Is he gentle? You tell me because you spank your daughter because you love her, that doesn't mean that you're not gentle. She is still gentle. We think of gentleness, gentleness as being someone that is passive. I'm not passive. I'm not going to be your chump city. It is easily to be intrigued. If a man wants wisdom, it is easy to understand. See, that's what this whore, her seven rush are the seven hills. And so she intriguing the people. Well, you, you on your own, you can speak what's on your mind. You don't need no man. That's part of the principles of their liars. You don't need no man to show you. Ah, I'm so glad your shoe has shown me the way. It says that wisdom is full of raham, full of compassion. Are we truly full of compassion? I know you think you're full of compassion. It is full. It is full of compassion. These are the seven pillars of wisdom. We're going to deal with the seven pillars of this whore. It is full of tough fruits. Not just fruit, but fruit. Love and kindness and meekness, gentleness is full of tough fruit. You're not full of fruit, daughters and sons of Yisraya. When the least little old thing, you get so angry, you can't get over your hostility. Yeah. Anger, but sin not. Hallelujah. I raise my voice, man, let's get this done. I don't care who it's with. Yo, and I, we got work to do tomorrow. I probably have to hit him up two or three. Come on, big man. Let's get on the ball, baby. Come on now. Yeah. Have all day. That's how I talk. I got that. No, you don't have it, man. Come on, man. You all right, big daddy? Come on, let's roll. All right, we got it. See, I told you we got it. Come on, man. Come on. No problem. You used to do him like that. Well, sure I do. 
And if you walk with me, I said, do you like that? When I work, I'm a monster. I know exactly how long it takes anything. I can look at anything and tell you exactly how long it's going to take. I don't care what it is, I can tell you how long it's going to take. I don't care what it is, I can tell you how long it's going to take. I know how long it's going to take. I have learned that through experience and over the years. From the beginning, I can tell. If we do that, I know it should take us a day, but I give us three days to do that. Do that. 1,500 blocks. It should be a week. I give us a week, although we can do it in two days, three days. It depends on how we feel. I know how long it's going to take you to do the rafters and the roof. I know all of that. How do you know that? You think that people, when they build, they don't know how long it's going to take? You, you tell me you're going to bid for a job and not knowing how long it's going to take to do it? That's silly. I want to finish up here. See, wisdom, the wisdom that is from above is full of tough fruit and is without partiality. Now, are we without partiality? This whore is with partiality. There is an elect that she has elected. And those that fall beyond fall in the crack, they have no place in her. It is without partiality. These are the pillars of wisdom. And first of all, there is no chonef. It's not a hoe. She is without hypocrisy. What is hypocrisy? It is a moral wickedness and filth. That you are so wicked, you have no conscience of how wicked you are, how wrong you are, and it doesn't bother you. And the only thing you say, well, I just did wrong, and I do, I do right the next time. You are morally wicked. You are, you are depraved in your damn wicked mind. That's what she has done. That's what the seven spirits of Skipha, it has bewitched and altered the thinking of the mind. It, it, it alters the mind. It bewitched the mind. It trains the mind. It has rule over the mind. Yah doesn't put these words in the book uh, just for anything. Uh, he wants us to understand what they are. And we must labor to understand what the words mean. Uh, you can read all day long. That doesn't mean you understand. Hallelujah. I'd rather read one katsuv in one night to understand that than to read 50 and don't understand anything. Because I can build upon that foundation. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. These are the seven pillars of, uh, of, 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 of the wisdom of Yah. It says that this woman, she is written mystery. And also down in Revelation 17.5, it says, uh, and she's the mother of abominations too, right? I'm not going to deal with that aspect, but I want to read this again. I've read it in the process of teaching in Mishuli. This is the fool of a Kessel. This is a Kessel's heart, a fool, one that is arrogant. One that thinks that he or she knows everything. It's, it, it's, it's, it's in Proverbs 26.25. Turn quickly, Proverbs 26.25. Proverbs 26, 25. It talks about the heart of a fool that says no to Yah. That's what, uh, that's what Nimrod said. That's what we say. We say no to Yah. This is what the Torah says. Uh, he says when a fool speaks, fair. When you think he got something wise to say, Yah says, um, when a fool speaks fair, believe him not. For there are seven abominations in his heart. She must birth those abominations in us. These are the seven spirits, these are the seven rush, these are the seven mountains that once you get in the valley, you can't climb over the summits of these mountains. That's what my natural brother said when I get over waters, there's one big and I, and I get over there and I just can't get back, I get out, I try, I try, and I can't get back. And he, he died that way. He died that way. You all can take it for a plaything all you want to, you got to come out of her. You got to come out of her captivity. Yes. And that's not because you leave America. Hallelujah. And we will see why. Because her tentacles are spread throughout all the earth. The kings of the earth love her. Yes. The kingdoms are based upon her principles. Yes. The kingdoms are based upon her principles. That's a fact. It is the truth, my friend. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to deal with this for a moment. Before I close the day. It says in Revelation 17, 5, we see what's written in her forehead. And she is Bobel the Great. I've emphasized that somewhat decently. But it says that she is the mother of harlots. I want to teach on that a little. To show you the nature of a harlot. She is the mother of of harlots. 
Mbobel, she has the summit. The rush it sits at the zenith of one's physicality, doesn't it? Your head is at the top, not at the bottom. This is the summit. This is your rush. And the heads are seven mountains. And seven powerful, who show them that rules in every kingdom. I want to emphasize this spirit that she birthed in the hearts of the nation of men. And how that these seven spirits, these cockatrice eggs, that we weave with spider webs and they loom, they loom higher. We become so arrogant that we exude ourselves above Yah. We buy into our own lies, Yisrael. We don't do things that are just and, and righteous before Almighty Yah in Yorkshire HaMashiach. She is a mother of holotry. Again, I want to revisit Yeshua, Isaiah. I want to show you that the power of the strongest pillar of her, of her kingdom, just like the Ruach HaChodash, that is the breath of the seven Ruachim. And so in her kingdom, as it is in her kingdom, there, are, there is a summit that perks, perches of all the other summits. What do you mean? Well, if I stand beside these men, they're taller than me. And that those that I've stand beside Ab, I'm taller than him. So he has to look up. So I have to look up to them because they're taller than me. Stand before them and they're taller than me. And so there is a pitted or a summit. The highest part of that, that little peak. You know these world tallest buildings. It's not that the building is actually that tall. They will put a tower up there. And there are towers that radiate her nature, her character. Come out of her, my people. It says this here in Yeshaya, quickly, Isaiah chapter 1. Isaiah, he speaks of the condition of Yehuda, the state of his nation. Here in Isaiah chapter 1, verse 21. Listen to this now. She is the mother of holotry. Is that what she is? Now look at the state, look at our state as well. It says, how is a faithful city become a harlot? We were a faithful city. We are, Bidami says it like this, we're a city that's set upon a hill. I saw King Bidami, does he not? He say that all the time? He says the same thing. He says the same thing. Yah says the same thing too. Yeah, we should be like a city set up on here. We got a light that can't be hit. It says, how have we as a faithful city, singular, not cities, as a city become a zana? You become an occult prostitute. You sell Yah for lies. You sell him for your own emotions. You sell him for your own sensation of your flesh. You're so wicked. You, that's what a zana is. You're unfaithful to Yah. You have become a prostitute of your own temple. No, you're not. Your body is the temple or the place where the Ruach HaKodesh dwell. You have become a temple prostitute with your idolatry and your idols and your false superficial damnable worship. He said, you are a city that was full of judgment. You must have judgment in a city. We must judge ourselves that we will have no need to be judged. And we don't judge no one. And he said, we're sadiq of the righteousness of Yah lodged in it. He says, but now, there's nothing but rosach, murderers, that dwells there. What kind of murderers? I've never killed anyone, but I've killed the many of men. Well, I don't want to say it like that. I've killed. If any of us Hate sonne our ach a chotin without a cause, achin without a cause. You are a murderer. You are a murderer, and we have despised the fellowship. That's why we must come out of her. When they fell down from that tower, no one even took a breath to look because they, you didn't even hear the cry when they hit the bottom. You didn't even hear the cry when they hit the bottom. 
It was like a little pebble as it went further. You didn't even see. It was nothing there. But when a brick fell, they cried. They mourned. They cried for that, Yisrael. Verse 22, he said, your silver has become siege. Your great silver or your faith that has been tried. It has begun to move back. It has become dross. Your wine is mixed with water. There is no pure wine. There is no wine in your, in your skin. You tried to put the new wine in the old ways, and the Baptist ways, and your damn Jesus ways. It's not going to work. You tried to put the new wine in old skins, and the skin is breaking. I can't handle that what he says. I don't like what he says. You're trying to put this new wine in the bottle, in the vessel, in a temple where we are prostitutes and whores and we sell ourselves away from you for some kind of illusion and trinket. He said, your leaders, your princes, they are sarah, they're rebellious, they're obstinate, they oppose you. We that call ourselves leaders, we are rebellious against you. Your mothers are rebellious. Your father, he said, and we have joined ourselves to the companion of Ghana, a thieves. He says, everyone loves a gift. They love brides. We're going to have, quote, pastor's appreciation. We're going to have first ladies day. We're going to have a day of offering for the pastor. We're going to have the mother's day to give mothers of Everybody loves gifts. Send an offering and a gift today, you that are listening. He said, everybody loves gifts. Everybody. Listen, they love the bribes. And they follow after reward. Did we not hear Isaac King preach on the, the payday? He said, I want to hear the next part of that. He said, he's going to teach on. The. He says, they have become in Isaiah 123. He said, they do not even defend the fatherless in the latter part of that verse. Neither does the cause of the widows concerned. They don't care about those that have been afflicted. They don't even care. You think that T.D.J. care about those that are having it rough? He's going to tell them you're not praying right. You're not giving enough. Give when you can't give. That You're a wicked dog. You're a fat beast. You're a child of hell. Why don't you give? Why don't you create a situation for the young poor women and, and assist and help and, and put a center that where they can be educated and teach them skill sets and all of that? Why don't you do that? Oh, I know they, what they do in those whole houses, but I'm saying let's get real. Where they don't have the obligation of, of, of the bills and all that. Bring all, no, no, bring your money here. We're going to save some money. We're going to get you right. They're not going to do that. Quickly, verse 24. Therefore, says the sovereign of hosts, the mighty one of Israel. Ah! Yah says, I'm going to ease. I'm going to comfort myself. I'm going to comfort me, oh, my adversary. He says, I'm going to take comfort in those that are adverse to me, my adversary. He said, and avenge me. I'm going to make my name right. And avenge me of my enemies, my oye. Listen to what he says. He says, and I will turn my right hand upon you. The seven ruachim, the seven spirits, the seven swords of Yah. He said, I will turn my right hand and purely purge away. He's talking to this nation, your draws. And take away all of your tin. This is a metaphor here. He said, I'm going to take away all your substance of your metals that cause your, your, your iron to be strong and for you to be strong. I'm going to take away all of your tin. How are you going to do that, Yah? He says, and I will restore the shoftim or the shofat. He said, I'm going to restore your judges as at first. He says, and also your yaits, your counselors, as at the beginning. Afterwards, you shall be called. The city of righteousness at a faithful city. That's the only way we're going to get back to that point. He must restore the power of judging among us. He must do that. He must restore the, uh, it's the counsel. Those that will show us you're wicked, you're wrong, and you're just not right, baby girl. Huh? And the counsel, the counsel of the elders, of the wiser, will say you are wicked. Now you don't say he is wicked, you don't say she's wicked because you're wicked. And you're afraid because she knows your wickedness, he knows your wickedness. I don't play with men. I don't play with no men. I don't play, I've never played. As a young dude, I didn't play with people. I don't play. I, I don't play. I've never liked that playing with a man. I just don't play with a man. I don't want you grabbing me and all. Uh-uh, nah, uh don't. Come on, man. Let's, let's, uh-uh, don't go that way. I just can't handle that. I don't like the job in the shuck bucket. The only way he's going to restore us to a faithful city. We have become a city that is so unfaithful because of Horam. The only way he's going to have to 
restore judgment. He's going to have to restore the Shafat. We're going to have men that are bold and not afraid to judge. And women and daughters of the Zakhain, Zakhain that are not afraid to judge because their lives are representative of what they judge you by. We must have that. If we don't have that, we're going to be an unfaithful city. We're going down to the gates of hell. And you ought to love yourself enough to want to do that, daughters and sons, all right? Oh, man, you ought to love yourself enough to want to do that. Let your light shine. So that the young man you correct him may see the honor and the power of Yah upon you. And then he will begin to sing praises unto Yah because he said your wise counsel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is what he says in verse 27. Zion shall be redeemed. Bada. We're going to be preserved with judgment. That's how he's going to preserve us with judgment, and her converts with righteousness, with the wisdom of Torah. That's the only way we're going to be preserved. No other way. I'm going to stop right there. This, I'm going to finish up this on this mystery of the harlot, the mother of harlot. Then I go into the next, next aspect. I'm just tired. I'm going to stop right there, just like that. Send an offering. Send some help. Send some help. You that are the hypocrites will not send a dime. And you listen, and you're extortioners, you rob, and you don't even care. And it costs money. People don't realize that sometimes we, we send hundreds of dollars worth of stuff out. I'm talking about just a mallet. And people have no, they have no shame to ask. And they'll ask for, we said we will send three booklets out. They want 10 or 12. I get three or four emails. I send me this, this, and that. And we're not sending a dime. The ones that are decent will say, Reach, here's an offering. Can you send me some? No, you don't have to send it off. And I'll send you all you want. May uh, strengthen you all. Come on, Zakin. Hallelujah. May he cause your heart to shine fat and rejoice in, in the top of Yahshua Hamashiach. Bless you all, my friends. you all send an offering and help. Hallelujah. What a wonderful palette, table, teaching that we received today, Israel. And as it goes on, it shall progress. And even the knowledge, the understanding of that would be even more profound and revealed unto us, Yisrael. To those that have ears to hear, let them hear what the Ruach has to say unto the assembly of Yisrael. It's not for every man to hear, Yisrael. It's not for the world. This is not for the wicked. This man has not labored as he has labored for the wicked, but for the house of Yisrael. Yah has deemed us Sadiq in this generation, and he shall provide us for the things that we need, for understanding, for knowledge, Yisrael, and for our own strength. And we may go on as an old condition to see what the end shall be. Hallelujah. And we know that, we know that Yah, he has a wonderful ending plan for us, Israel, Yah, which is really is just the beginning of all things. Hallelujah. Let us stand to our feet. Hallelujah. We do Barak call Israel, Yah, you that are scattered abroad, that are listening by every, every form you may hear this teaching, this message today. Shabbat Shalom, Yahweh Barak, you all. Abba Yahweh, we do told you for this another day you have given us. Abba Yahweh is beautiful. We know that the sun has risen, Abba Yahweh. But even if it was cloudy outside, Abba Yahweh, yet your Ruach HaKodesh is poured out upon cold Yisrael. And the Dhamma Yahshua has been applied. We do give you Torah for all things. We ask that those that have come, Abba Yahweh, to be with us near and afar. Those that have gathered in their homes today, Abba Yahweh, that you will take them home safely. In Yahshua's name, you will touch cold Yisrael, those that are weak. Those that are sick in their bodies, Abba Yahweh, let them know that they have strength in Yahshua HaMashiach. So we, we claim the name of Yahshua HaMashiach, the healing, in Yahshua's name we do pray. Hallelujah, 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 Shabbat Shalom, Kol Yisrael, hallelujah.